Hello everybody, my name's Ardendris, and welcome back to Sunless Sea. Last time, if we take a look at the map, we started up here in Pigmoat Isle. E yes, that's how last time started, right? Or am I thinking about the episode before? I think it was last time. We started in Pigmoat Isle, like, really hurt, so we ended up healing up on paying extra to the rats to heal up our ship. Then we kept going back to Fallen London, did some story bits there, nothing special, just picking up a few things. And then we started exploring the southern region, which is a lot of places like Mudden Island, the Command Canal, the Iron and Misery Cove, Funging Station, Abbey Rock, Station 3, and the Con area, which are all places we've been to before. Uh, we did get a little bit in the way of new stories down here. When we made our way into the concert, we managed to p get our hands on a long box, which we've needed before or to do any exploration into exactly what Station 3 here is. So last time we come here, we get to go through the door, explore a little bit, and then we meet the... Here they're just called the Acolytes. They had a title before Acolytes. I don't remember exactly what it was. Amicable Acolytes? No, it wasn't Amicable. It was something along those lines, though. It was some positive describing word that was started with an A. I just don't remember exactly what it was. I just don't think it was Amicable. But anyways, we meet them, and it turns out these long boxes that we need to deliver here are actually coffins for, like, actually dead people, unlike the sort of dead people everywhere else under here. And we have to deliver these, like, actual dead bodies in these coffins to the acolytes here who do something like the... This acolyte removed something from this person's body. No idea what it was. But then, we still have a little bit more storyline to do here. Before we continue on. So we can do like, there's more to ins there's more inside the little gate, or we can pick up some errands for the acolyte. Let's see what the acolyte wants here. Maybe we'll, they'll tell us more. From time to time, she'll admit that there's something you can do for her. Guarding the yard, a present if we have a whole bunch of fragments, or a novel present. She's in search of new music to sing at her work. You could write some. Your pages quality gives you a 22% chance of success. Um, before we do that, let's check the inside of the little gate. The airport is open to you now, although it is clear that your welcome is conditional. Don't cause trouble. Okay, if we had long boxes, we could come and deliver them. We can return later. I exchanged a long box for a heart metal ingot. Heart metal. That must be what they were what they were removing from it. Because it was like a metal spear inside the chest of this body they dissected. Interesting. I guess we'll return later. Other acolytes move between the buildings, singing softly, but none of them seem inclined to speak to you at this moment. Back to the docks. Down the steep stairs, the song of the acolytes fades behind you, but still you find yourself humming their odd melodies. Perhaps there will be more to do here another time. Okay, so it's just this, it seems like? Guarding the yard. She asks you to keep a night watch on the dump where she throws away the unused heart stuff. Sure, let's do this. There's a 72% chance of success. There are... Oh yeah, didn't mention last time. We failed 10, like 20% chance things in a row. And we just failed a 77% one too. Fun. 
Apparently, usually one of the other acolytes performs this melancholy duty, but no one is available today, so it falls to you. The place proves to be a wide field, knee-deep in the dark matter. You quickly learn better than to touch it, or even go very near it. The cumulative uh, misery of so many lives is dizzying if you keep, if you even look in the general direction. You keep your eyes out to sea instead. So we gained some favor with the acolyte, but we didn't succeed in whatever this challenge would have given us. And for now, that's it. So we didn't gain as much as the story. We didn't gain much more in the way of story here. But I guess that's fine. Maybe we would have learned a little bit more if we could actually win any sort of chance thing right now. But whatever. It's fine. Just quick check. We still have 10 fuel and 11 supplies. So we're good for a little bit longer. So let's choose a direction to head out in. Hmm. Thinking back to when we had our map before, and I probably should have looked back a few episodes to so like take a look at the map and see how much was still left blank. There's only probably a couple more islands that we haven't seen any story for. Like it was like a little segment in here. And that was about it, if I remember correctly. We found almost everything. We're going to keep working our way to the south yeah, southeast. Because that is where the... Where is it? Uh, Father's Missing Bones is here. Yeah, we need to go to King Eater's Castle, which is always in that bottom right corner, it seems like. So we're going to keep working that way. See if we can't continue on with that storyline. I'm hoping to eventually get one of the endings. I don't know. This series has been going on for quite a while now. It's probably going to end as soon as we pick up one of our endings. And it seems like the one we probably get done first is probably going to be the Father's Missing Bones. Like, the other endings seem cool, but they also seem quite a bit more difficult. We're sailing right towards an island, and the Z-Bat was just like, Nope, there's nothing here. Ever useful. Hmm. We've seen this before. What was this? Ah, the Fathom King. Might as well stop up. Hmm. Do we have something to gift the Fathom King to get our gift in return? He takes secrets. Oh yeah, I forgot it does that. He takes secrets, right? Z stories. Okay, we still have one. Might as well pick up our port report first. And then... If we had seven skin to lock, we could pick up whatever these are. We'll descend to an audience with the Fathom King. Speaking to the porter. Um, your story's sufficient. We read a lot of this before. Let's see. I think this is exactly the same. Eh. The Fathom King. He's a... Uh, basically the King of the Drowned. You could ask a boon of the king. Uh, listen to a Kaganian emissary. Hmm. This event wasn't here last time. This was changed out before it was someone who was like, uh, like, down talking the king <laughs> in his presence, which didn't seem like a good idea. We did lose. Four Zaylers last time, so we could spend some of our skin to to get them back, but I think we'll be fine. I think we're gonna ask a boon of the king again, although that would be interesting. Sea bounty. Rosy flesh. The king intones. One from the water. Tasted in good health. He waves a gracious hand, which. Oops. 
While his waters thresh, the audience is over. As you return, crab slaves carry ice boxes filled with sweet, fresh meat, pink as dawn. You've gained supp five supplies for five terror. Okay. Probably worth it. We're up to 16 field, uh, supplies now. Which, worst case canar canario, worst case scenario, just translates into fuel if we run out of that. Uh, uh, avoid that. Uh, no, no, don't do it. Don't mess with us. Please don't mess with us. Uh, uh, uh. Game's stuttering a little bit there. The game does not like that thing. We just gonna see ya. Hmm. While we're out here, do we sail off the edge? It should just put him put us back at Fathom King. Or not Fathom King, uh King Eaters. Plus, we'll get some story for it, but it will cost a little bit of fuel and supplies. But I think we have enough to cover it. Actually, I think I'm going to keep on the lights. Uh, z -Pat, go! Nope, nothing. Wait, was there another island down here at Fathom King? Did I miss that? Was that something else, or was that just, like, connected to this, uh, island change? Chain. Ugh. Anything else out here? <laughs> this is, like, the fourth time in, like, two minutes I open up the map. Are we gonna run into anything on our way to King Eater? Well, that's a lighthouse. said lighthouse near an island? A ship's horn, far away. Jack a dandy stack. Giant monster. Mm, don't mess with us. Don't do it. It's doing it. That was close. Is that just nothing? It's just like a little... Varchus. Hmm. That's a new one. Oh yeah, I suppose we did have a little section at the like very bottom of the map that we didn't explore on our old map either. Uh, where's the port? I can't see it past this. Okay, we're still lined up with it. Arches. The mirrored city, where light was always the law. The burning white light of Arches. The walled city of Arches is a tangle of green vines and luminescent fungal flowers, slow blooming around moldering stone. A quincun. A quincunce? Quincunce? I have. No idea about that one. Of carved stepped towers rise over the walls, in and, and pour burning white light into the bleak sky. A rough shadowed path leads from the docks to the mirrored garden gates of Varchus. Two towering carved stone lamps throw their lights on the angled mirrors, and a blue cloaked guard stands on a reflected pool of light. The city is a beacon against the tree hushed sprawling darkness of the Elder Continent in the far distance of vast mountain glimmers. We have quite a few options here. We might as well start with the port report. The, Admiral the Admiralty will want to know. The Mirrored City and its glory. 
tone down the details of the light and its brilliance. We don't want to inspire envy in the Admiralty staff. Hmm. Choke on the smell. Does Ailey's wear you? Wave you over. Ask the guard a few questions, or tell the guard you wish to enter. Um. Choke on the smell. I guess we'll start top to bottom. I don't think any of these are going to be specific, like, one or the other. It is overpowering sweet. It comes from the fungal grow the fungus growing wild all over the city's stones. The flowers have white waxy leaves, which leave powdery traces on your fingers. The light coming from the city has the same camphorous quality and the smell. Perfume worn too many days on the body. Unread books left a turn to ink stained pulp, a garden drowned and rotting in still water. The sailors wave you over. They are sitting on some upturned crates on the docks, playing a game with mirrored chips and stylized snakes made of bone. You're not thinking of going in there. The sailors gawk at you in an unconcealed horror. They take turns telling you gruesome stories of Varchus, which they no doubt invented whole cloth. Some are convinced that the Varcha Varchassi render sailors into tallow to light their city. Others say they steal shadows and sell them to their masters. All of them are convinced that they blind any strangers who dare to gaze too long upon their city's secrets. We're just waiting to be paid, and then we're off. One of the sailors says, nervously fingering a mirror chip. I've only got one eye left, and I'd like to keep it. Hmm. And finally, or not finally, ask the guard a few questions. Never a bad idea to gather a little intelligence before heading into unknown waters. Or cities, as the case may be. The blue, gu the blue cloaked guard only acknowledges your existence when you step out of the darkness of the path and into the light from the lamps. The guard at the mirrored gates. The guard stands in the middle of the pool of light, looking warily at the darkness beyond you. Up close, the guard's blue cloak is threadbare and mossy along the hem. A pattern of embroidered suns runs along the collar, but the gold thread is dull. The coal around her eyes is smudged. Well, Tomaz, she asks, are you going to ask questions, or are you just going to stare? Her tone is brusque, but her expression is curiously eager. You do not think Varchus receives many visitors. Your name is not Tomas? You correct her politely. Ask about the lights, ask about her, ask about the city's customs, or you have no more questions. Her voice is, your name is not Tamaz. You correct her politely. The guard looks scandalized and tries to stop her ears. All those who are not of our Charsi are Tamaz. You have been touched by darkness and has taken your name. She fixes you with an admonished look and adds, it is very ill-mannered to pretend you still have one. You begin to see, a little, why Varchus is not often visited. It looks like you will have to get used to being called Tamaz, if you wish to enter. Interesting. Oop. Ask about the lights. It all seems a bit wasteful, possibly even ostentatious? We must always walk in Mahir's light, so we burn our lamps night and day to banish darkness from the mirrored city. She tells you proudly. We let darkness corrupt us. We could, would not be Vachasi any more, any longer. But Tamaz, like you. You wonder, is that so terrible a fate? Her mocking laugh answers you even before her words do. Yes, it would be terrible indeed, Tamaz. And before you ask, she adds, no, I do not have any desire to leave Varchus. The rest of Neath has fallen from his grace, and I have no wish to join them. Ask about her. Does she like her job? Does anyone? It is a great honor to guard the mirrored gates. She snaps defensively. She gestures to the edge of the pool of light, illuminating her post. It is very dangerous. Even a small stumble and I could fall into the dark. Her voice goes thready. I would be banished from Mahir's grace. I would lose my name. That is why they only send the bravest outside the walls. 
ask about the city's customs. Best to know before you flout them. Easier to plan an escape route that way. Don't touch the mirrors. Don't even look into the mirrors. She says, her voice hard, and try very hard not to dream. Were you expecting something along the lines of don't murder anyone, or only wear red on special occasions? Just still, you nod and smile. Like, yeah, I feel like don't murder anyone's probably a rule everywhere's, but okay. Actually, judging by a lot of the people in this game, that might not actually be the case. We've definitely dealt with quite a few people who are very happy to take a life. Anyways? You have no more questions. You are satisfied. Or perhaps the guard's voice is beginning to grate a little. She looks a little disappointed, but does not try to engage you further. So this is a strange place. Like, light is holy to them. And anyone who is not from here is tainted by darkness. Also, don't look at the mirrors or dream, apparently. Whatever. Tell the guard you wish to enter. Well, what else are gates for, if not to go through? She makes a mark in her ledger before ringing a brass bell. The mirrors of the gates rearrange to give you space to pass, but never once allow Shadow to touch the guard. Our ways are not yours, Tamaz. Remember that and walk in the light of Mahir. Just realized the name Mahir is, is very close to Mirror. Just like, if you take a quick look at it, even like the letter H has like an R hidden in it. It definitely kind of looks like they took they like took the word Mahir and it slowly translated into the name of a god. Inside the city walls. Your eyes are blinded by the brilliance of the light. The verdant's wrought smell and even th is even thicker. The heat of so much flame and reflected light presses oppressively against your skin. Your head pounds. It is a few minutes before your eyes adjust and you can look around. Brass lamps and gilded sconces hang from every wall, and phosphorescent fungus grows moss like open uh, grows moss like upon doorways and ceilings. Cunningly arranged mirrors catch every droplet of light and diffuse it till each cobblestone and rampart of the city is drenched and blazing and utterly without shadow. Who do you speak to? Okay, we have a few options. The Fire Keeper, the White Cloaked Guard, the Fungus Carter, or the Jewel Turbaned Youth. I guess we'll go top to bottom. Unlocked with Varchus, the Nels of the Tower, no more than four. Unlocked when something awaits you. Unlocked when something awaits you. Nels of the Tower. I think we, we might only get one of these, because it's something awaits you, but the rest of them, I think we'll be able to do all of them. The Firekeeper. Crystal and Saffron, a pair of thick fireproof gloves dangle from a silvery chain at her waist. I'm too important to play guide to you, Tamaz. She tells you before you even open your mouth. I'm the keeper of the Western Principal Mirror. She points up at the enormous, multi-faced mirror set atop each of the city's five towers. I'm only here because I'm looking for my idiot brother. He is probably busy pouring wine down some pretty dark-eyed boy's throat in a tavern. Is it a matter of great urgency, you wonder? He's late for his lamp checks in the sacred district. In her terse reply, as she hurries away, If the Agna Hotri found out, he'd be lucky to end up a lake dredger. Hmm. I know Agni is a word for fire. I have no idea about the second part of that. You now have a memory of distant shores. Nice. The first tower bell has sounded. And our quality with the tardy lamp lighter is one. Um, these might be one or the other, so let's do the jewel turbaned youth first. He is winking at you. That is a furtive wink, or a flirtatious one. Only one way to find out. He looks utterly overjoyed to make your acquaintance. The bangles on his wrist flashing as he presses his hands together in greetings. My friends and I would like to honor. 
would be honored if you would attend a small gathering with us, Tamaz. We are so eager to hear about the world outside of Archus's city walls. It seems an innocuous enough invitation, but then why does his gaze dart around so anxiously as he tells you how to find his mansion in the Eastern District? The first hour bell has sounded. Invitation to a mansion somewhere. That's probably going to end well. <laughs> the white cloaked guard or the fungus carter? Let's start with the guard. The suns embroidered on his cloak are picked out with gold thread, and the ju edge is jeweled with carnelian. Tomaz. He presses his hands together in greeting, then gives you an anguished look. You look terrible. Are you sick with a terrible outsider's disease, or is that what your nose is naturally like? Wow, rude. <laughs> Over your protestations, he gives you directions to the hospital. Oh, the medics are all butchers, to be sure, but they walk in the light of Mahir. He heads breezily and then points out the guard house in the vague directions of the Temple of Mahir, and a street of bars and gaming houses. We don't want to get a, a reputation for being inhospitable. He laughs as if he had made the grand joke, and he'll laugh along weakly. The second bell has sounded. The waves are flecked with light. Hmm. Interesting. Yep, we did only get one or the other. So, continue your explorations. I'm to venture further from the out, outer, di outer district. The mirrored city gleams invitingly. You'll get used to the smell in time. The center of Arches. You walk galleried courtyards wreathed with vines and fungal blooms. <laughs> Long, straight rail roadways crisscross the length and breadth of Arches. The stone worn by the wheels of carts and the tread of thousands of slippered feet. Lamplighters constantly check the fuel levels of the sconces and replace wicks. Firekeepers check the coiled spring mechanisms that control the angle of the mirrors. There is much to explore. Where will you go next? Entertainment? There are bars and gaming houses to the west. A hospital. The hospital lies in the shadow of the southern tower. Wait, there's a shadow here? What happened to, like, no shadows being allowed? Unless that's just, like... <laughs> unless that's the... What's the word? That's, like, metaphorical shadow, not actual shadow. The guardhouse? The Temple of Mahir? The mansion? The inn? We don't have enough bells for that one. Or a pilgrimage? Okay. Spoiling things a little bit there, I think. Let's check out the entertainment. There are bars and gaming houses to the west. Follow the clink of wine glasses and the companionable shouts. Entertainment. There are many available. Mahir is not a Puritan god. Nicer establishments in the city are lit with expensive imported gas and have little blue glowing skintalak statuettes scattered on the shelves. Wait, what takes your fancy? Join the gaming table? You're playing on an ornate board with pieces of mirrored chips and snakes made of bone. The arguing priest? They're having a wine-drenched debate at one of the tables in the back. Do you care to listen to it? Listen in. The duelists. I'll return to the city center. The courtyard is strewn with white sand. The duelists fight with curving twin-bladed scimitars in each hand. You could try your luck in an exhibition mass match. Um, we'll think on that one. We're probably going to do the duelist if we do this one, but now that I think about it, the knells of the tower are no more than four. We have two. If we get one for every one of these we do, then we'll only be allowed to do two. Although not all of these... Might grow Nels of the Tower? Hmm. Let's see. We need Nurse's Approval, Respect of the Guard, Agna Hotri's Interest, and the Jewel Turban Use Invitation. For that final bit. Hmm. Actually, let's do this one first. The Mansion of the Jewel Turban Youth. It is in the Eastern District. Well, he did invite you after all. At the mansion of the jewel-turbaned youth. 
you were not entirely sure what you were expecting from the jewel turbaned youth's invitation. Perhaps a candlelit dinner and a genteel seduction? It turns out to be an evening of card games and chilled wine with his rather eclectic collection of friends. But as the wine is drunk and the cards are played, the gathering takes on a certain political tone. A raggedly dressed artisan begins complaining of the Agnihotri's trade restrictions. A novice priest points out contradictions in Mahir's mantras. A stone carver questions whether his daughter should also have to follow in the same profession. Will you? The jewel turban youth stares at you, licking his lips. Will you tell us a story? Declined firmly. It is not wise to become involved in politics, especially politics that are not your own. You will leave and not return. Tell them of yourself. It might be nice, to be honest, especially to a group of people you'll never have to meet again. Tell, invent a fanciful tale. Tell a wanderer's tale, or return to the city. Um, let's tell them of ourselves. You wet your throat with tart wine and fix your eyes on our carved lintel and begin your own somewhat convoluted tale. At the end, they look slightly dissatisfied, slightly relieved. We were hoping. The jewel turbaned youth goes his throat. That you would tell us, um, he pitches his voice lower, lies. You are a little insulted. After all, it's not as if you make a habit of telling strangers of your past. I mean, no insult, he adds placa placatingly. We only have true stories here in Varches, and no inventions, no made-up tales. Three terror lost for a memory of distant shores, and the third tower bell sounds. Did we try again? Invent a fanciful tale? Let's try it. Let's hope this doesn't bring a... Perhaps the wine is muddling your tongue, or maybe the fungus smell is too distracting. You can't seem to weave the threads of your story together into a hole. Your hero, a dashing Z-captain, turns unexpectedly into a drowning, and so you pack him off to the tomb colonies, much to everyone's confusion. We lost a terror for that. Um, return to the city center. There is more of arches to explore. We might return there in a second. Hmm. We're already at four, so we only have one more shot at something. And we haven't picked up any of these yet. Um... Let's go back to the entertainment. I want to try the dueling. We already read that bit before, so let's try it. The blades are light and deadly. There is an intent, intent light in your opponent's eyes. You step together and then away, your blades kissing gently before scraping apart in a rasp of steel. Your opponent is going easy on you, but that is what you are here for. An exhibition match is meant to make both parties look good. It's hard to keep your mouth from curving into a sharp grin as your blades clash and chime. Your sweat under all the reflected light, and your arms are shaking by the time the arbitrator calls time. Your opponent bows deeply. A flick of eyebrows and a flourish of blades, and you did the same. We won one! Finally! How many things did we fail in a row? I think we're up to like 14, right? How, how many events did we try to pass on a percentage this time? It, it was a bit, right? We went 10 in a row last time, and then we got at least one this time. I think it was a couple more than that. But anyways, a memory of distant shores, some fragments, and the fifth tower bell sounds. It is evening. Can't do this, can't do this, can't do that. Return to the city center. Oh, I see. At evening, after the fifth bell, each Tamaz is assigned a room. Okay, so we get to go multiple days here. Okay. The light is endless and merciless. Will you sleep? Evening in Varchus. All visitors to Varchus are given one night's accommodation in the city's only inn. 
It is a handsome stone mansion arranged around a pleasantly cool courtyard. Frescoes of city life are painted on the walls. Given how few visitors Varches host, you suspect the inn is more usually used by philandering locals. Evening falls, or does it? The town's five principal mirrors are mounted on coiled spring mechanisms and alter their angles subtly to create the impression of evening. Across the city, the firekeepers throw pinches of colored powder into the lamps, and the quality of light yellows to a softer brightness. The wine mazed lamplighter. He is dressed in saffron robes and is indeed pouring wine down the throat of a very attractive dark eyed boy. You could tell him his sister is looking for him. Wow, he was late the entire day, huh? The kitchens? The courtyard? Sleep? Don't sleep. Hmm. We're gonna do this first. He starts up in horror, spilling burgundy red wine everywhere. His young companion looks irritated. I'm late! He shouts, Me here, forgive me, the Agnahotri is going to skin me alive! He pumps your hand in gratitude. Thank you, Tomas, I won't forget this. Here, take my arc jewels. You've gained three outlandish artifacts. Nice, thank you ever so much. The kitchens, the courtyard, sleep or don't sleep. Let's go to the kitchens. The smells of cooking mingle with the fungus rot, but you aren't going to let that put you off of your food. The inn's cooks make thick spice stews of fungus flowers and lotus roots, eaten with chunks of boiled cassava and rice imported from inland. But it is the light, hungry fruit grown in the city which makes your mouth water. On this one, yes. Tart scented oranges and bruised yellow bananas. Pineapples bursting with juice, tender coconuts with the silky white flesh scooped out and sap sweet on the tongue. Do you not eat meat? You ask in wonderment. And the inn's cook calls to me here for strength. It is forbidden to eat the flesh of living creatures, he says. Lucky the, luckily, lucky the Varchazi don't fancy the Z-faring life. You succeeded. It is night, although there is no darkness in Varchas. Time to sleep. Sleep or don't sleep? Hmm. Unlocked with zero menaces, a dream of smoke, and no more than zero menaces, a dream of smoke. Or we could fail at not dreaming, and end up dreaming anyways. I want to see what this is, but I also prob it's probably like pretty bad, and we probably want to avoid it anyways, so let's attempt not to sleep. Their bed is low and wide, and draped with cotton sheets, stamped with vegetable dye patterns in muted greens and blues. Don't sleep. It won't be difficult to stay awake in this constant light, but the lack of rest will take its toll. Yes, we succeeded! A meditative evening. Up late, reading, thinking, watching. The shots from the streets die as far as sleeps, but you're tired the next morning. You gained five terror. Your permitted time in Varchus is over. Time to go. Until next time. Uh, we've already read that bit before. This is like the still the in. Uh, what's it called? The in dialogue page. Dawn in Varchus. Outsider time in Varchus is strictly rationed. Each morning at dawn, the guard visits the inn to eject any Thomas they find. They're polite, but very definite. Okay. Into the dark. Return, the guard tells you, but not yet. With that, they usher you into the darkness beyond the walls. You blink mirror dazzles from your eyes. It's cold out here. Your Varchus the Nels of the Tower's quality is gone. You've gained a terror. Up to 69. And that's all for now. So this is an interesting plate that we'll definitely be returning to. But that's just like, yeah, don't return yet. The Mirrored City, the City of Lights. Nice. That's a pretty cool storyline. Where is it? It's probably somewhere in here. 
Here it is. We got done with the lamp lighter and some shipping of the jewel turban youth. Okay. We got some stuff down here. That's a really cool place. We'll return here eventually. Looking at the time. Hmm. That feels like a good stopping point, but it would put this episode a little bit short. So. We do have a little bit more time. We're just gonna travel the rest of the way to. Uh. King Eater's Castle. We're not too far off. Fuel and supplies wise, we should still be good. I think we can turn off the lights for now. Well, that's a cool place. Light is sacred. And it never should grow dark. I, I just heard it sound like it sounded like there was going to be like one of the swarm of bats. But I don't think this region is reserved for like stronger enemies. I don't think we're going to find those out here. We've entered the Sea of Statues. Don't know why I sent out the Z-Bat. It's just going to tell us about King Eater. Oh, it's one of those things. Oh, it didn't even tell us about King Eater. Yep. Leave us alone. Don't notice us. Those are like the statues right outside King Eater. Which means it should be coming up in just a moment. Hmm. I'm curious what these things along the shore are. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's a whirlpool. Don't want to sail into one of those ever again. Oh wait, no. We have to sail north anyways. This is where we're going. Send up the Z-pad. I think it's... Yeah. Sail up and round through here and avoid that at all costs. You know, I'm looking at fuel again. I am less certain on it. King Eater's Castle. Dock. An act of burning faith. Lose your mind, eat your crew. Just a lot of things that are just like, these are like, bad. You probably don't want to do these, but we'll pick up the port report. Hmm. I would like to see what happens when we do this. Mm. We're at six fuel left. We do have quite a bit of supplies left, which can be used as fuel in an emergency. We'll be fine if we do this. Sure, let's do it. Just to see the story bit. An act of burning faith. Which god holds sway here? Storm, stone, salt. I mean, perhaps no god that is elsewhere named. But if you feed it, it will calm your mind. A red and roaring light. At King Eater's castle, one finds unexpected words rising easily to your lips. You speak them, and so do your sailors. As they build the offering pyre, the heart is destiny's engine. The bosun mumbles. He looks embarrassed. We shall all return. You find yourself reply. You light the pyre and stand back. The flames warm you, warm your crew. The light plays on your faces and your outstretched hands. The darkness shrinks back. In crackling of the flames is the sound of home. You've lost 25 terror. That is really good. We were up at 76. There was no way we were making it back home. We shouldn't do it again, though. Anyways... Looking at the time. Yeah, we have enough time for this, too. Your father's bones at King Eater's castle. All around the altar, bones lie in brown drifts like naked fossils. If the admiral is to be believed, your father's bones are here among them. But which? Where? Sift through them. 
The castle is almost silent, only far off waves in the bamboo click of the bottles. Of the bones. I didn't think it said bottles. They are light in your hands, a little greasy to the touch. Whoops. Okay, apparently this spoils what happens in this, but okay. Tail. Tail's bones tell. A dozen or more of the bone piles wear a knife in the rib cages. Two of the knives are undistinguished tableware, and one is rosy glass, but most are of similar type. Flint hilts and blades of dark coral. These are the knives that drownies bear, those unsleeping dead who lure sailors from their, with their song. Their ruler is the Fathom King. Surely he must know something of what happened here. Travel to, fa to the Fathom King's hold to continue. Okay. Good thing we found where that is this time, huh? Probably gonna have to head all the way back to Fallen London just about now anyways, so we'll just stop up there on our way. But anyways, this is a pretty good place to call it. We got done quite a bit of exploring. We started at Station 3. I say we got done uh, quite a bit of exploring, and we did. We did travel quite a different distance. We only did find three locations, though. But apparently all three of them are, like, pretty important story places. Like, Fathom King, yeah, it gives you quite a bit of supplies, and is also apparently directly connected, as is King Muter's Castle, to a Father's Missing Bones mission, which we need in order to win the game. And then Varchus is just like this cool story in and of itself that probably doesn't cross too far off into other storylines, but it is pretty cool. But anyways, this is a good place to end it. I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed as much as I have, and I hope to see you next time. So, without further ado, take care everyone.